was that heavy sigh for? Are you tired? Hmm? Who are those people? <laughs> Who are they all? They can't get enough of you. They think you're the cutest thing. Well, they do. They think you're the cutest thing. <laughs> she just belched in my face. And all I can do is pity her. Because I have been belched on by a basset hound. <laughs> that was nothing. That was nothing. It's been hours since you ate. What are you belching? <laughs> Did I wake you up? Hmm? Maybe I did. Maybe I woke you up. Hmm? <laughs> Hello, BookTube. <laughs> and welcome back to your Daily Penguin. <laughs> this is our trip through my Penguin Classic wall, book by book, author by author, era by era. And we have been in a vein of Penguin Classic Deluxe Editions. Very nice, uh, pretty things that uh, are well worth the time to look at and to talk about. But I believe that vein is over for now. I have plenty of others scattered throughout. But uh, now we're moving back into the wilds uh, don't, with no uniforming, no uniform unifying theme at all. Uh, and today we're looking at a different kind of penguin. We've looked at Black Spine Penguin Classics. We've looked at Penguin Classic Deluxe Editions. We've seen some of the Penguin Classic Hardcover Editions. Um, and this is something else. This is something that Penguin ha did called Penguin Galaxy. I don't know if they have continued with this, but it gave me a, a brief glimmer of, of enormous hope. Because Penguin Classic Galaxy was... a uh, a collection of hardcover, very nice reprints of science fiction and fantasy classics. And for a while, the first, the initial batch of six Peng uh, Penguin Galaxy volumes looked like Penguin had spent the money to get reprint rights because it wasn't just common domain stuff. They did Dune, uh, for instance, and, uh, and a few other things and uh, that are still under copyright, that are still, they're still making its writer money. That, is, that was a wonderful sign of hope. That led me to think that maybe Penguin Galaxy would be a huge undertaking. Imagine if there was a whole wall of science fiction and fantasy classic reprints in these format. That's what I did want. That's what I did imagine. I imagined that that would happen. I don't know that the Penguin Galaxy is continuing. It might have been a one-off. Uh, but one way or another, I was very happy to get that original set. And the book that we're looking at today is perhaps the nicest of the ones in that set. The Once and Future King. Look at that, huh? With uh, that on the, on the front and Excalibur on the back. The only problem, the problem that's going to drive some uh, compulsive or anal people just up the wall, is the spine. Where the Once and Future King is not going down like that. It's going up instead. Never seen anything like that, uh, and so that's a little odd. But this this has an introduction by Neil Gaiman, who it's not really an introduction to the Once and Future King. He really he really introduces the uh, the whole series, uh, which uh, let me tell you what they are. They did the Once and Future King. They did Stranger in a Strange Land by Robert Heinlein. They did Dune by Frank Herbert. Uh, 2001 A Space Odyssey by Arthur C. Clarke. The Left Hand of Darkness by Ursula Le Guin, and Neuromancer by William Gibson. Now, all of those are still under copyright. So that led me to think, okay, this is great. That's fantastic. So if you can do a volume this big and you are willing to shell out for copyright, then here's my list of 100 things that I hope you do. <laughs> and I don't know that any of that happened, but I was happy to get these six. And this is, of course, T.H. White's famous novel uh, about King Arthur, that, uh, whose opening chapter, The Sword and the Stone, was also released independently in a slightly different form slightly different content, as its own book, and became beloved in its own right, and became a Disney classic, a Disney animated classic. Uh, the Once and Future King is a very different book from that, the, the Sword in the Stone. You can still buy it separately, and you can still buy it in that original format. Very much pitched for kids. Very much The Hobbit. Uh, the Once and Future King takes that chapter and the three other chapters in here and shapes them into something in, in, very much more adult, very much more uh, serious and jagged, and also beautiful. Just beautiful. This is this is one of my favorite books of of any kind of book. This is just an incredible, incredible work. Uh, it was 
very distantly the the sort of the seedbed for the Hollywood sensation Camelot. Uh, and you will often, you, once upon a time, in used bookstores, you would see the, the old Once and Future King paperback repurposed with a Camelot cover. I think I've shown that cover on this channel. Uh, this is, at the moment, my only hardcover of this book. I, I have a trade paperback and a mass market, and uh, I am due to reread it from front to back. I have read it many times, and sometimes I read the one individual chapter more than I'll go back and just read that one individual chapter. Uh, and the the book that was originally I kind of thought of as the was going to be the final chapter of this book, the Book of Merlin, was published separately on its own, and is also one of my favorite books. I think it, the Book of Merlin is just as much as I love the One Sir Future King. The Book of Merlin is so very much a Steve book <laughs> that, that it, it tends to stick out in my mind. Usually, the T. H. White rereading that I do will be the Book of Merlin rather than anything else, uh, but. I'm due for a reread of this book, and the only question that I have about this Penguin Galaxy volume is one that I don't actually know, uh, which is how well it can be read, how well it stands up to reading. Will this gilding come off, for instance? Will the will the spine break if I read this? I don't. I don't. That's the one thing I don't know. The one thing you can't know about a book until you actually try to live with it is can it can a big thing like this actually stand the strain? I don't know one way or another. I almost read. Uh, the Penguin Galaxy copy of Neuromancer uh, to find out that question, but Neuromancer is not a long book, so even if I had read it, I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily know how this would stand up to the strain. But sooner or later, in 2020 somewhere, I think I'm going to put out feelers to see if how many how many fellow booktubers might be interested in a read along of this thing because I wouldn't feel right to reread anything without doing a read along on BookTube now, would it? <laughs> so so that is your Penguin for today. It's a Penguin Galaxy volume. Uh, of the Once and Future King, where where a, a brief window open into an alternate world in which Penguin actually does what I always dream about them doing, where Penguin actually has the right to reprint anything. And it's purely a matter of format and uh, edit an editorial decision that is worthy of, of a reprint. Oh my. Uh, I, Sean D. Stanfast, Mark Richardson, Jason Harrigan, oh, there are a whole bunch of us on BookTube who could easily draw up a list <laughs> of the books that we would like to see in, let's say, a hundred title Penguin Galaxy list. Oh my, we could easily draw up a list. I have a feeling that most of the books that I just read, The Once and Future King, Stranger in a Strange Land, Dune, of course, 2001 A Space Odyssey, The Left Hand of Darkness, and Neuromancer, I have a feeling that those books would be on almost all our lists. I think that our list would have a lot more intersection than you might think, despite how different we are as readers. Uh, I don't know if that's going to happen. I will I will research and see if Penguin Galaxy died a, died a Borning or not. But I'm so glad that I, that, I, that I have the volumes that I do. Uh, so that's your Penguin Classic for today. What I wouldn't give if there were a Black Spine paperback Penguin Classic for the Once and Future King. How wonderful that would be. I Part of me thought, back when these came out, I think these came out in 2016, part of me thought, well, maybe that'll happen. I mean, if the Penguin can print it this way, they can print it that way. Maybe, maybe they negotiated a deal for that to happen. Imagine a, a Black Spine Penguin Classic of Dune, of Neuromancer, of Left Hand of Darkness. Oh, uh, but in the meantime, I'll take what I can get. And of course, this is a recommend. If you haven't read this book, you are missing one of the great fantasy works of all time. One of the only fantasy works that can stand uh, on the same shelf as some of the greatest books that we think of. You think of Lord of the Rings, you think of works like that. This is better than all of them in, in terms of just its prose quality. But it's also it, the humor, the pathos, the heartbreak. The, everything, the world building, if you want to call it that, it's all, it's a reimagining of Arthur, the likes of which, it's a strong recommend. <laughs> it's, a, it's a strong recommend. Uh, so I don't know, maybe the next book in the series will also be a Penguin class, a Penguin Galaxy volume. I don't know how many of them I still have. I made it, I was rather industrious about giving them away. I had a whole second set that I gave away uh, of those original volumes. But then I think over the years I have given away one volume after another of, of just chipping away here and there. But I think I still have a couple. So maybe they'll be together. We'll, we'll find out tomorrow. <laughs> we'll find out tomorrow in tomorrow's Daily Penguin. <laughs> I will see you then. Thank you, Book 2.